Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome. It is Monday, July 27th, 2020. Welcome to the last week of July in the year 2020. What uh, an amazing month that July is turning up to be, turning out to be. I am uh, still located in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is in northeastern Indiana. Today, they're expecting some rain, so I'm taking some chances having this outside, praying I don't get rained on. And it's humid. You know, that's one thing I didn't get when I was in Colorado, is humidity. And uh, I didn't miss it. <laughs> so today is humid. I'm wearing, of course, my shorts. And, uh, and actually, I got a new shirt I will show off. I haven't gotten any new shirts for a while and decided to make a venture into one of my favorite places to shop, Steinmart, and uh, here in Fort Wayne, located on the south side of Fort Wayne. And uh, when I went in there to get the to shop, uh, I noticed that everybody was wearing masks like outside. They had some sales outside and I'm like, why are they wearing masks outside? They're outside, you know? And I know that the Indiana governor put in to whatever recommendations today to start wearing masks um, and so anyway I went in there went into the store looked around saw that everybody was wearing masks there but me and it's interesting because the Lord just kind of showed me you know these are the beginning of the last days and who's going to stand up you know for me it, it's really a preliminary laying the groundwork of who's going to stand up for Jesus and who's going to bow down to the enemy and there's there's a lot of symbolism to all of this stuff going on you know and I get it initially when we first started to have the CV 19 rolling out from China all over the world and uh, and not understanding not realizing oh my god gosh how deadly is this gonna be how horrible how you know we want to maintain it I get that but now that we've learned and understood what we learn now and know it's like, okay, we need to use that wisdom and no longer be in fear, no longer be in worry. Yes, people get it. Yes, people have died from it, but no more than the regular flu. So let's not be, we never were, we all, never quarantined everybody and shut the economy down because people had the flu before. You know, um, and you think about the bubonic plague, John G. Lake put the bubonic plague in his hand because he knew who he was in Christ. And then and it died in his hand. So we need to have Christians like that, that are not in fear, not in worry. Of course, I've traveled all over uh, from Arizona to Las Vegas to where is it? Anaheim, Southern California, and San Diego and Hollywood up to Ojai and Bernie, California, up to Portland, to Seattle, all over the north, you know, the west, basically, and no worries, no fear about it, because I know who I am in Christ. I know whose I am in Christ as well. So. Anyway, it's uh, quite uh, an interesting time that we live in. Um, and so, anyway, I got my shirts shopped there at Steinmart. They, got, they wanted me to see if I would get a credit card from Steinmart. I said no. And then they gave me my clothes, and this is one of the shirts that I got. It's more of a workout shirt. Speaking of workouts, I'll talk a little bit about Planet Fitness, my visit there this morning, under the new rules that Indiana has about trying to make people wear masks. Um, so on Sunday, uh, I was invited to come to church with uh, my good friends Amanda and Justin Baugh, uh, also um, Joy and Frank uh, from uh, Syracuse, Indiana. And so I got to, to go to their church. They had, I don't know, probably 60, 70 people that were there. About, I think half the church was Hispanic. It's interesting. I love it because when you go there, they sing the songs when they sing the songs in worship they sing one chorus in spanish and then they come back and they sing the next chorus in english and so they go back and forth so it's really really cool and really thoroughly enjoyed it and um of course amanda and joy both have you know, great testimonies of restored to freedom the freedom that that's brought them and their families and others and there's others there that attend there that have also uh gotten freed from the enemy. What I did not know was that Amanda and Justin were born four days apart, and uh, I did not know that. They were born in the exact same year, four days apart. Amanda's birthday is, I believe, Thursday, and Justin's was on yesterday, Sunday. So they had about 50 people over 
from the church and friends to their house, I had a great birthday party, and I ate two pieces of cake, and it was buttercream icing. Oh my gosh, the good stuff. And then I wanted to go to sleep after I ate it. <laughs> Having the sugar drop as I'm driving an hour back to Fort Wayne, uh, to the home I'm staying in. So anyway, this morning, I go to Planet Fitness, and here we are, because I talked, uh, I've worked out there now, I don't know, four times since I've stayed here the last little over a week. And I asked them on Friday, so what's your policy gonna be? Are you gonna make people actually wear masks while we're working out? And they're like, we don't know, we don't know. I'm like, all right. So then on Monday, I pull in there in the parking lot, and as I get out of my car, I notice the car in front of me has them some writing on their back wind window of the car. I think it's like a Pontiac Bonneville that they had. And they actually had like taken these large letters that were like probably a good, I don't know, four inches tall, and they spelled out words on the back. And so I read it, and to my shock, surprise, and delightment, it said this. It said, Jesus said to dot, 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 go and sin no more. Repent now, exclamation, exclamation. I mean, you can't make this up. I'm like, what? This is awesome. Like, oh, that's... The whole message of RTF <laughs> is to get people truly becoming a part of the Bride of Christ and not just going to church, going through the motions, and then living like the world the rest of the week, you know, and being angry and mean and abusive and sexually perverse and all the things that are not a Christian, that are not going to get them to heaven. So I see that right in front of me. I'm like, ah! So I took a picture of it, and you can see it. I post posted it on Facebook under my post talking about my experience at Planet Fitness. Again, it's on Nelson Schumann. Um, and then they have a logo below that that said, where are you going, where, where are you going to, to when they come for you? Heaven or hell? And I'm like, whoa. I go, if we can get like another five million people to put that on their car, <laughs> like that would be amazing. And again, I don't believe in fire and brimstone condemnation messages. All, all I do is, in love, share the truth and then let the people come to their own conclusion if they want to get delivered in a normal way or if they don't. They can keep the demons they want. They'll never have peace. They can keep living their lie. The Lord knows who they are in their hearts and their minds. They can't fake out the Lord. And when they die, the Lord, if they're continuing to not have good fruit, then the Lord will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And they're like, well, wait a minute, Lord, Lord, look all I've done for you. I've cast out demons in your name, prophesied in your name, done many wonders in your name. And that's Matthew 7, 21, 23. So anyway, back to the Planet Fitness and their mask policy. So I walk in, uh, I walked in through the outdoor, outdoor. <laughs> Remember that song, Raspberry Beret by Prince? Um, there were people that were walking out that had masks on. I walk in without one. I click my little thingy showing my Planet Fitness on my phone so that they know who I am. And the lady behind there was wearing a mask and she said, hello, and being real nice. And I talked to her a couple times before. I think she was the one that I actually asked on Friday about their policy. And she said, well, our policy now is that you need to wear a mask you know, when you're not working out. And I'm like, well, I came here to work out. <laughs> so. I guess I'm good, I don't have to wear one, I'm working out. And she's like, well, um, when you come in and you leave, you need to wear one, and then between the stations, and, and of course I go back and I work out with my upper body with the different stations that they have. And I'm thinking, wait a minute though, that's kind of weird. I go up, but I'll be going from one station to the other within two seconds. So you're saying I'm supposed to wear a mask? <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's about the most craziest thing I've ever heard. And, uh, so I walk on by and look, scope the uh, room that has all the weights and stuff in it. And I didn't see anybody wearing a mask except I think one older lady was wearing one. And out of probably 10 or 15 people. So I'm like, okay, great. We don't have to wear masks. <laughs> Even though, and I'm sure that the people that work there don't want to make people wear it. And uh, they know people that work out are healthy for the most part. So. Anyways, um, I did my workout and left and um, said goodbye and 
And I'm just thinking, how nuts is this? How crazy is this world coming to? You know, to have people go to this extent. You know, we didn't do this when people ca caught the flu. In fact, I'll say this, is in December, before I even knew about a coronavirus, I remember doing research about, I wonder how many people have the flu this year? And there were so many people that they were showing numbers from that had the flu, like it was like a record year for the flu. I'm like, well, this is interesting. Why aren't they talking about this on the news? And they weren't. And then later on, when it became what, March, I think it was, is when they started to finally report, oh my gosh, this virus all over the world is taking over. Everybody's gonna die. And then when you actually started realizing, wait a minute, not everybody's gonna die. In fact, 99% of the people that get it recover. Huh, I go, this is kind of seemingly overblown a little bit. And then we started to think that, okay, it'll die down once it dies out. And then it started dying out. And then, oh no, no, here it comes. It's coming back again, even greater. <clears throat> and I'm like, I don't believe this. You know, in my spirit, I'm thinking, I don't think this is true. I think this is a lie. And then we started actually getting validations from different places saying, nope, nope, they were inflating the numbers. Sorry about that. Or people waiting in line for hours and they couldn't get tested. They left. And then they get a phone call back from the people that were testing the lab. Hey, you tested positive. Congratulations. <laughs> and they're like, what? No, I didn't even get tested. You guys are lying. Oh, sorry about that. And then we see more and more numbers that are inflated. So all this stuff is just ridiculous you know and then you see the people riding in cars with masks on or I was in Colorado and people were hiking you know and getting over an extra couple feet and I'm like really I'm like the virus is not gonna jump from you to me it's not gonna jump from a tree or a rock up to me I'm like this is ridiculous you guys are so blown up into fear and of course I, I believe the Lord prepared me for all this because I wouldn't I don't know how I would have reacted um, I would have I would have been much more in fear, I'm sure, than I am now, but I went through some things back in 2009 to learn about walking in my authority in Christ and understanding who I am and taking the authority whenever I did get some sickness on me. And so now I have not needed to see a doctor since 2008, so it's been 12 years, and dropped my health insurance back in 2012. So eight years, no health insurance, no worries, no fears, trusting the Lord for everything, and he has trusting the Lord and the immune system that he blessed us with, so. All right, so just breaking news, this just came in. <laughs> um, Walmart is no longer forcing people to wear masks. Yay, that's a great victory. Why? Because shoppers were getting mad at their employees. <laughs> so, how about that? Praise the Lord. Also news is I learned that Governor Holcomb in Indiana is not going to enforce the wearing of masks law that he put into place today. He's like, he's not gonna penalize anybody or put anybody in jail or fine them. He already told the local officers around the state, you know, just, we'll appease the people that are saying that we're supposed to have, let's wear mask things and we'll probably get a bunch of people that will. But if people don't, that's okay. Don't, uh, don't be mean to them. So, so yay, that's a great victory. Um, and coming up, August 1st, I will be in Minneapolis. That's this Saturday. I thoroughly enjoyed my time up in Minnesota the last time I was there and uh, I am looking forward to round two we're getting more people to come this time because we had more than a week's notice you know last time we had people come from seven states from Florida from Texas from Chicago from Des Moines I or Iowa from Nebraska from South Dakota Wisconsin on one week's notice one week's notice that we're having this so now we've had I think two and a half weeks to promote this and we're getting a lot of people that are coming so people are hungry they want to get together you know that's the whole point is we were meant to get together we were meant to uh, to uh, socialize you know and the enemy's completely against that wants to in cause us to isolate ourselves so um, so it's going to be a great turnout and uh, we are going to see people get healed from their past wounds and healed from physical stuff you know, we've, I've had testimonies now come in the last couple days from people that have gotten delivered from suicide. They are no longer getting suicidal thoughts because they were delivered. People are getting delivered from fibromyalgia and delivered from uh, scoliosis and other things. Because when we forgive people for hurting us, when we repent for our pride, when we do what our part is, then the Lord does his part. And he will come in and protect us. And then we can take authority, like Jesus said to take authority and command the demons to go. And when they're gone, man, you feel so good. I feel so good. I have 
no demonic thoughts coming from the enemy anymore. No fear, no worry. Like, oh my gosh, they just had some rioting going on in Minneapolis. Sunday night, 50 people got mad and started to do some more rioting because it was too quiet and too nice up there. It's like, really? Okay, then I need to get up there and help get more people delivered. You know, that's what the Lord's commissioned me to do. And you do it in peace and fun and enjoyment. I know people that came last time said, oh my gosh, we love the worship. The worship sounded amazing. And, uh, and it was. It was very, very anointed and people could feel the presence. And So anyway, August 1st, the Minneapolis Marriott West, which is west of downtown. Like, I don't know, seven miles, something like that, five miles. Uh, so that will be exciting. It's at 7 p.m. this Saturday, August 1st. And then the next breakthrough event we're doing is August 8th at the Marriott in West Des Moines, Iowa. And then August 15th at the Marriott on the west side of Omaha, Nebraska. Never done ministry before in Des Moines. Never done ministry ever in the state of Nebraska. And did you not know this? Did you not know this? We have 99 days left until the election. The election of the world <laughs> with President Trump. And we'll see if uh, Biden can make sense in more than one sentence. You know, it's, it's, it's embarrassing sometimes to hear some of the things that he says that just don't make sense. So, anyways, uh, 99 days left. Less than 100 days left before the election, November the 3rd. And uh, I believe we'll see a lot of red um, sweeping the nation. So, all right, now the topic of the day is the issue is not the masks, it's conditioning the church to submit to the enemy. That's what the issue is. You know, bowing down, submitting, you better do what we say, otherwise we're gonna put the screws on you. You know, and a lot of the church, a lot of the pastors are obeying this. And uh, you can't obey something that undertone-wise has a, uh, an evil intent. And so I'm going to explain all this and let the Holy Spirit speak through me. I'll stop. But I posted the blog this morning. It's resonating with a whole bunch of people. And in fact, last Friday, we had, I think it's now a total of 18 or 19,000 people that that video has reached. A lot of people had shared it. Um, and... Uh, it's resonating, is all I can say. It's resonating. I think we had it had 8,500 now views. Um, it's the most watched uh, video of the year. And so, and this one might top that. Who knows? But it's like the, 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 the messages the Lord's now downloading to me are really resonating, especially with the remnant, the remnant in the church who have discernment, who are going to be the sheep and not the goats. There's a whole bunch of goats in the church. There's a huge amount more percentage of people that go to church that are the goats that are just going along with everything that everybody says and oh yeah we just got to believe and trust in in man and not trust in God for what God's saying you know and that's not good you know and that's what the revelation says is there's gonna be a whole lot of people who are gonna follow the Antichrist and at first when I read that when I was young my mom read that I'm like that'll never happen we won't do that and then I started seeing it play out now and I'm like man I can see that easily because it's happening. It's happening. There's too many people that are clueless, that are not discerning anything in the spirit. You know, and they're following local pastors that unfortunately in large part are also bowing down to the enemy out of fear, out of this 501c3 uh, saying, if you don't listen and do what we say, we'll pull it and you can't get any more people. They won't tie it to you anymore and you'll lose your church. Well. People are going to lose their churches regardless if they don't preach the truth. We need to be bold. In fact, I think that's the message the Lord's going to have me share tomorrow is to talk about what is it to be bold and to do things for Christ, for fear of God. You know, we need to have seek out God's approval, not man's approval. And it's a hard decision. I know that it is. It's much easier to go along with the rest of the world. But if you do that, you're going to go off the cliff with the rest of the world. You're not going to get to heaven. You're going to take the mark of the beast. And uh, that's really kind of what this is preliminary for. So anyway, let's go ahead and start reading. Let's face it, folks. And it's kind of it's interesting the way the Lord had me write this, too. There's a lot of symbolism in the words that have like a double meaning with the face and the mask and stuff. So let's face 
putting a mask over us. Let's face it, folks, the world is forcing everyone to either submit to wearing masks or we will not be able to purchase food in grocery stores and buy products from other stores. Most people who are unable to discern in the spirit, so they're clueless, most people, unfortunately, let's be honest, are clueless. They're watching CNN for their news. They're watching NBC, ABC, and believing everything they hear, which I'm like, that's your first problem if you're doing that. That's not, <laughs> it's not true. It is fake. It is a false narrative by the enemy. So don't ever watch that stuff. Um, all right. So the world is forcing everyone to either submit to wearing masks or we will not be able to buy food and groceries and other products. Most people who are unable to discern in the spirit would just say, it's only a mask. Wear it. It will save us all from getting the CV-19. And uh, that's unfortunate. You know, they're like, oh, how selfish are you? You're not wearing it. You don't care about anybody else. It's like, uh, no, I care about my lungs and I don't and I trust in the Lord to provide my health for me and my immune system and not in this mask that they've already proven is not going to stop coronavirus. So when in reality, the doctors and experts who aren't afraid to state the truth have said that the mask will not stop CV-19 and they actually reduce our ability to breathe oxygen. You know, people have done tests where they put that little thing machine inside of their mask, they're taking breaths and the amount of carbon dioxide goes from like 630 up to like 2000. So it's not healthy. And I'm gonna actually cite some sources where people have passed out and died from wearing these masks. All right, um, not to mention the people who get CB19 have a 99% chance of surviving it, which is similar to those who get the regular seasonal flu. You know, I talked to a person yesterday that she got it and then she got over it and like, I don't know, four days later. So when you get into worry and fear, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, well, you could do that any single day of the week with the regular flu. So so is it real? Is CV real? Yes, it is. CV-19 is real. Absolutely. It was created over in Wuhan, China to try to cause this worldwide pandemic. Um, you know, have people died from it? Of course. But again, many more people died from the regular strain of flu than CB19. So are people overhyping the fear of getting it, trying to shut down the economy, force people to submit in order to buy food and other supplies? Absolutely, positively, that's truth. So interestingly, the media has failed to expose, they've failed to expose some very negative ramification uh, for those who have agreed to wear the mask. So I thought I would do a little research and report so this you can find, they haven't taken it down yet. It was on the New York Post the article on April 24th, 2020. So just a couple of months ago by Craig McCarthy. Yay, Craig. Great job of reporting truth. A New Jersey driver crashed head on into a pole after passing out from wearing an N95 mask for hours, police said Friday. Lincoln Park Police believe that the driver, who was not named, lost consciousness while behind the wheel Thursday from lack of oxygen and breathing in excessive carbon dioxide thanks to the mask. Okay, again, I got the link for this, or you can search, you can search uh, New Jersey, because it took a place in New Jersey, New Jersey driver passed out mask, and you'll find it. Okay, the LPPD, which is the Lincoln Park Police Department, responded to a lone occupant single car motor vehicle crash yesterday. The crash is believed to have resulted from the driver wearing an N95 mask for several hours and subsequently passing out behind the wheel due to insufficient oxygen intake, excessive carbon dioxide intake. The cops wrote, we also know that nothing was uncovered at the accident scene that would suggest that the driver was under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. While we don't know the cause with 100% certainty, we do know that the driver had been wearing an N95 mask inside the vehicle for several hours and ultimately passed out while operating the vehicle, the department said. So don't be wearing your mask inside a vehicle. Not good, you could pass out. Police told residents that while they should continue to follow Governor Phil Murphy's 
In fact, I'll say this. I just learned this today that apparently the people in New Jersey and I think New York have not been able to work out still. They cannot go to the gyms. That is the unhealthy thing. You know, you have healthy people like me that like to work out and it keeps you healthy. Again, I have not had any sickness needed to go to a doctor since 2008. So it's been 12, 12 years and uh, it feels great. If I get a little symptoms that are coming on me, I pray against it and I don't take anything for it. <laughs> I don't take any vitamins either. I haven't taken one vitamin since 2009. So I'm like, it's either the Lord is my healer or, or it's not. That's what the Lord told me. He said, yeah, if you trust me and have your faith in me, I will heal you of everything. And he has. You know, it doesn't mean that I don't get symptoms from time to time, but I haven't had any for a long time. So, and it feels really good. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me go on. Police told residents that while they should continue to follow Governor Phil Murphy's guidelines for wearing face coverings in public, wearing an N95 mask while driving with no other occupants is unnecessary. So just say no. Still, we are not trying to cause public alarm or suggest wearing an N95 mask is unsafe, the department added. The driver was taken to a local hospital where the person was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. But he did hit the pole because he passed out. Because he was Okay, next. And again, I didn't... I didn't spend more than five minutes searching, so I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other articles that are out there. But this is interesting. Two schoolboys in China reportedly collapsed and suddenly died within a week of each other after they were forced to participate in gym class while sporting face masks. The students, both 14 years old, were running laps as part of their school's required physical exam tests when they both unexpectedly dropped dead, according to Australian outlet Seven News. The pair of incidents, which occurred just six days apart, have prompted calls to cancel the term's running exams amid coronavirus concerns and possible breathing difficulties brought on by the face masks, which are required to be worn by many governments worldwide in a bid to slow the illness spread. One of the teens had only just begun the physical exam when he collapsed on April 24th at Dan Cheng Kayan Middle School, located in the Henan, Henan province in central China, according to his stepfather, who was identified as Mr. Li, L.I. It happened within two to three minutes during his P.E. class. He was wearing a mask while lapping the running track, then he suddenly fell backwards and hit his head on the ground, Li told Seven News. His death certificate listed the cause as sudden cardiac arrest, but no autop autopsy was performed. Lee believes the mask his son had been required to wear played a factor in his tragic passing. It was sunny and their PE class was in the afternoon when it was at least 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It couldn't have been comfortable running in that. The student had only just returned to school four days earlier, the first time children have been allowed back in their classroom since they were shuttered by the Chinese government in January. His funeral was held on April 30th, the same day a second boy died under similar circumstances at Jingzhan Future Experimental School in Changsha, the capital of central China's Hunan province. He was reportedly participating in a 1,000 meter running exam and was wearing an N95 mask when he dropped dead on the track. China's major cities, including Wuhan, the original epicenter for coronavirus, where they created the coronavirus in the lab to release it upon the world, to try to crash everything, and including our economy. Um, so, says the original episode for coronavirus have been gradually returning to normal in recent days. However, most foreigners are still banned from entering the nation. Ahead of their reopening, many schools in China have spaced out desks and organized smaller classrooms to protect against CB19. And in addition to face masks, students are also required to have their temperatures checked. Those are results that are not too high are allowed to enter the building. Okay, so the main issue with being forced to submit to wearing a face mask in public places is that um, is begins to condition everyone to submit to the demands of the states and the government in order to be able to buy and sell anything. Thus, if you don't wear a mask, then you cannot purchase any food or products. Even if you are totally healthy, which the majority of people all are, 
The enemy knows that in forcing people to not be able to buy and sell without wearing a mask, that they can then set the stage under a masked agenda that appears to be good at face value. Wear a mask and you won't get CB19, but in reality has a very evil disguised undertone of more control for the future. The mask that most people wear cannot stop anyone from getting CB19, but it makes, makes people feel safer as their actual faith then is not in God and their immune system to protect them because they weren't really taught that in the church, unfortunately. I learned that in 2009 and I've been walking in it ever since. It's amazing when you really truly understand and know that God will protect us if we have faith in him, but if our faith is in masks, then we're up to the uh, protection of the mask. And if the mask you know, doesn't allow complete uh, protection, which it doesn't, then, um, then you can get it. So that's why we need to learn, we need to be taught this, pastors, about our authority in Christ and how to walk that out. I've learned it and it works. It's, it's, it's called walking in the, having the spirit of the Lord live within us to protect us and having the protection of the Lord to protect us. And I'm gonna be talking about some Bible verses here. You remember when the e Egyptians were getting pummeled by the plagues and so forth, God's hand was protecting his people. You know, those that were the Hebrews, they didn't get all those plagues on them. So we need to learn that, we need to be taught that. Um, all right, so doctors have already used the analogy of it being like putting up a chain link fence to keep oneself protected from mosquitoes. Again, I mentioned here about Minnesota, I was up there a couple weeks ago and they have lots of mosquitoes there and because uh, they have 10,000 lakes. So it doesn't work. You put up a chain link fence and the mosquitoes will get in. Same thing with uh, wearing the masks. The uh, coronavirus will get in. It's not gonna stop it. These masks appear to be intended to protect people but instead symbolically are meant to silence and condition us to submit to their authority, to the enemy's authority. Interestingly, this is really interesting. Uh, again, I wrote this on Saturday afternoon. Interestingly, people who struggle with the spirit of Jezebel, which causes people to control and manipulate other people to submit to them with their evil intentions of the demons that are speaking to them. So those who struggle with the spirit of Jezebel wear a symbolic mask, acting like they are good and they have your best intentions at heart when they don't. They simply want to control you and, uh, and they ultimately want to hurt you. They want to control you and hurt you and force you to do what they want, which is not godly. So the parallels are amazing between this whole mask thing and then the spirit of Jezebel. Because again, people that have the spirit of Jezebel, they wear a mask symbolically. They act all sweet and nice and, oh, I love you. I'll be your best friend forever. And then they marry you. And then within a, either <laughs> the wedding night or within a couple weeks, they manifest on you. And they start to go berserko and control and manipulate and get jealous and, and lie. And because uh, it's demonic, they have demons that are tormenting them and they behave in that. So, all right, so the next thing the socialists are planning is to stop all sales of products via cash by saying that they are now mysteriously having a shortage on change. And next it will be $1 bills and then $5 bills that will take out of circulation so that they can shut down anyone privately who wants to sell products without the government knowing through the automated credit card system. What was interesting to me, and I don't believe it was, I mean, there's so many things that are happening to me. Everywhere I go, it's crazy. So on Saturday, after I get this shirt and another shirt that I wore actually last night and yesterday from Steinmark, I stopped to get some gas at a BP off of DuPont Road near I-69 in Fort Wayne. I get my gas and I just happen to look in front of me. It's right there. It's like God puts these things right there. There's a, a stand that has corn, corn on the cob on it. Of course, I always say I'm a kid from a cornfield because I literally grew up on a farm. We had corn. And I look down below it and it says honor system. And there's nobody there manning the stand. And I'm thinking honor system, corn, huh? 
I'm like, you mean you can actually go up there and get whatever coin you want? And then they are hoping that you pay for it and you're honest. The honor system, being honest. And then they have a place where you can put the cash. And the Lord showed me that the enemy's plan is to do away with cash so that you can't do that anymore because then you could actually buy and sell and not be a part of their system where they're trying to force you to get the mark of the beast. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there it is. It's so clear now. That's right, you know? It's like, that wouldn't be there. They'd have to have like a credit card machine for you to swipe on your own, which they didn't have. It was to put cash in this container that was like locked into their stand. You know, they didn't actually have it freestanding so people could run away with it. Thank God for that. So anyways, it's so true. It's so true. They want to do away with cash next. Mark of the beast. This is where we're headed. So again, most people in the church don't even have a clue about this. Why? Because the pastors aren't talking about it. And the state doesn't want the pastors to talk about it. And if they're going to yank their 501c3 so that the people won't get tax deductions, they can control that. So they're not going to speak the truth. They're not going to talk about what candidate to vote for. All right, so then after people have worn the mask for a while, they will then try to get people to accept the vaccine for the virus, which would be a bad mistake. <laughs> Um, the virus that 99% of the people in the world survive who get it, mind you, by telling them that if they aren't vaccinated, that they will not be allowed to go into stores, purchase food and products, go to school, all these things. So that's where we're headed. That's why it's dangerous for us to bow down and just say, okay, let's, let's all wear the masks. It's the right thing to do. We want to stop this virus somehow with these masks that don't really protect us. Yeah, that's going to do it. Mm-hmm. So this is all setting us up to accept the mark of the beast in Revelations 13, 11 through 18. That is what is so diabolically evil about accepting to wear masks. Ultimately, it is an attempt to condition us to accept a one world government in which Christians will be persecuted most of all. Again, most people don't read Revelations. They don't even know about what the Antichrist is, what the characteristics are, the mark of the beast. So I'm gonna read this to them so they can understand it. Um, Revelations 13, 11 through 18 says, The beast from the earth. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a, a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. See, that's the scary thing about this. People are going to look at these signs that the enemy does, and they're going to say, oh my gosh, that's truly from God. Only a godly person, a godly prophet could do that, because Elijah did that. But again, the enemy will oftentimes be able to do the same things that Christians can do. Of course, how many Christians are we seeing calling fire down from heaven anymore? It's because we've watered down the messages. There's no more godly fear and boldness for the Lord. So, here comes a FedEx driver. As I watch closely, <laughs> remember the uh, the FedEx driver that shot and killed the uh, son, the 20 year old son of the uh, judge that took over the Epstein case. So that's why I was referring to that. So, all right, let me go on. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. That's where we're heading, ultimately. That's what's in Revelation, as the winds kick up <laughs> right now. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, this is my right hand, um, or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, it says in verse 18. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So that's where we're headed with this whole mass thing. That's why it's so dangerous. 
That's why we need the pastors to stand up to be bold. There's a pastor I'm going to listen to from Milwaukee who is very bold. And there's other pastors that are in California that are standing up. And they're suing the governor. You know, they're taking a stand. Boldness. They're like Stephen. Stephen was bold. He didn't get pushed around. He said what was needed to be said. He lost his life. He gave his life up, but he spoke the truth. We need more of them in this world and less wimps that are out there who are bowing down, less people that have the Ahab spirit that are bowing down to Jezebel. All right, so unfortunately, anyone who accepts the mark of the beast will not be allowed into heaven. They will go to hell. The old adage goes that you cannot boil a frog by sticking him into boiling hot water because he will jump out instantly. So you have to slowly condition him by sticking him into cool water and then slowly turning up the heat. And then before he realizes what is happening, he is dead. This is exactly what's going on with us. We've had this going on for year after year after year. We've allowed things to happen, such as abortion. I remember when that first was debated because I was back in uh, first year in college and um, they were talking about you know more and more legalization of it. And I'm thinking, this is wrong. Why would we kill babies? You know, that, well, that just smacks in the face of what God and Jesus, but then yet we accepted it. And that was sad. And then we accepted, you know, taking out God from our church or from the schools. You know, I remember Madeline Murray O'Hare, you know, and I did some research on that. And she had a whole bunch of demons that were in her and her um, family. It was sad. Um, in fact, I believe her son ultimately pulled away from that, one of her sons. The other son died a horrible death, I know. Um, again, trying to pull God out of the school system, you know, and, and Trump is actually trying to put God back into the school system. And people that are in the church think Trump's bad. I'm like, are you serious? Do you not see what he's doing? The actions, they're good. I'm like, oh my gosh, sacrilege, you're not even a Christian. I can't believe this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, seriously, I will speak the truth. I will be bold, and if you want to, speak the truth with me, you'll be honored, you'll be blessed for it. You know, I'm continuing to travel throughout the country doing ministry. Who's doing that? There's very few that are. They're all shut down. Oh my gosh, we can't, can't do this. We might get in trouble. They're telling us not to, we gotta obey. I'm like, no, they're wrong. It's ungodly. So, so the same principle is occurring now in real life. If the enemy tried to force all of us to take the mark of the beast, and it could be through small microchips and vaccines, then they could implement the ability to not allow people to buy and sell anything because they would know if you took the mark of the beast or not. That is what is so evil with going along and allowing the enemy to deceive us by lying to us about their real agenda to control all of us and force us not to be able to even attend church or gather, you know, even in home groups, while allowing people to riot and destroy cities. It is all demonic and most people don't have a clue, trusting that their city leaders, state governments, and democratic controlled agency. I got an ant <laughs> that came in my shoe. Um, Democratic controlled agencies in the inner cities, state capitals, CDC agency, and others will protect them. It has been now proven that they have been inflating the numbers of people who have CB19 to create fear in order to make everyone submit to them again a second time so that they can eventually control us all to take the vaccines and eventually the mark of the beast. In Florida, some of the places were saying 100% of the people who came for testing had CB19. No, that's not true. But they were saying that that was the case. I remember in San Antonio, they had to back the numbers down by thousands in just one place. San Antonio, Texas. So it's time to wake up from our lukewarm water before it's too late and we are all boiled to death. Some say that we should just obey our governmental leaders and do what they say which if the leaders were godly, we should, but they're not, as they go against God and try to hurt us. And they have been going against God for a long time by allowing the killing of innocent babies, abortion, which is symbolic to sacrificing babies, what Jezebel did to Moloch. They've been doing that for, again, centuries. Moloch and Baal, um, sodomy, homosexuality, pedophilia, sex trafficking, you know, pedophilia, you know, they're trying to say that that's just another sexual orientation. It's normal to have sex with kids. It's 
like it is not. That is perverse. That's what this really is all about. Is those who are the most perverse, the most evil, are trying to keep getting away with hurting God's innocent. And the children are what they're trying to hurt. And Trump is trying to stand up for that and stop it. And so he's got all the world against him. Lying, lying, lying. You know, so we need to pray. Pray, pray, pray for him. And um, he is anointed to do what he's doing. Most would just look to the other way and just let it go. Most were a part of the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the presidents in the past. But he's not. You know, he, is, he can't be bought. He's already got money. So the other ones sold out even the Republicans, so. All right. Um, so again, and, and when they first started having this, the CV, people getting getting that, like I, I know in New York and stuff, they put those that were sickest in with those that were in the nursing homes so they could kill more people. That is evil. That is evil, and that happened. Um, so, trying to, you know, trying to force the healthy people to wear masks that do not protect anyone in order to condition them to control them so that they cannot buy, sell food. It is all based in fear, which allows the evil ones to use to control people. And now social media platforms are shutting down people's accounts if they share too much truth about what is actually going on. You know, in fact, I got this uh, myself from Instagram. I had posted where, um, this, is back, this is back in June I posted this, where it talked about how the N95 masks, it says on the box that they are not going to protect you against CB19. So I posted that, posted on Facebook, posted on Instagram. Well then on Instagram yesterday, I get a notice saying the fact checkers just attached to your post that that was partly false. So we have to put that on there now permanently. I'm like, what? It's not false, it's true. It's, <laughs> it's on the box. I'm like, what are you doing? And so they are, and then this other I'm just, I'll keep her general, but she's another woman that her husband had worked for President Trump. And I know the guy, I know her, and she had been threatened that if she posts more truth about things, they're gonna shut her down. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe God that we're actually getting to the point where Big Brother is now making it so obvious. Saying we're gonna shut down people's accounts. Why, because it's the truth. We try to, you know, my, my children perish for lack of knowledge, it says in Hosea. And that's what's going on right now. There's a lot of people, the truth is getting out there. And then that's rising up. And that's why I believe Walmart has now finally pushed back on forcing people to wear masks. Thank God. They're like, okay, this is nuts. You can come and shop now, people. You don't have to wear masks. You know, because you can imagine. <laughs> that's like, people are like fighting and striving, saying, what are you doing? I'm not gonna wear a mask, it's too hot, number one, and, uh, and they don't protect us. And then you have all the people that believe that it does. Yes, it is, how bad you are not wearing your mask, getting dirty stares. You know, I went into Steinmart and not wearing the mask, the only one there. I went into the Kroger, what, last week, and there was one other woman that didn't have one. And I went up to her, I'm like, thank you so much for not wearing the mask, thank you so much for not caving, I appreciate that. And she's like, this is nuts, I can't believe people are so believing that this is gonna, Ah, and I'm like, yep, yeah, it's it's demonic. <laughs> it's what it is. It's all demonic. So, so a lot of times people are saying, well, we should just obey and do what the government tells us to do. You know, and, 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 and you can even liken this to what happened with Hitler. You know, Hitler started taking over and first started saying, oh, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Believe in me. Trust in me. And then before you know it, he's killing people. And then and he's so big into it that they can't stop him. And it's horrible. And there's, what, six million Jewish people that were killed? So, so anyway, yes, Big Brother is watching, controlling, and what's wrong about bowing down to the government, forcing people to wear the mask, is that they're lying to us. They're lying, and it's deceitful, and they're bearing false witness, which goes against God. I'm going to read a couple Bible verses that back this up. Exodus 20:16. Most people don't know this because it is actually one of the Ten Commandments that Moses got from God. It says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, which means lying. And there's a lot of people that struggle with the spirit of Jezebel that are lying about people. And that's what's behind all this agenda in large part. It's all Antichrist. It's all Jezebel. 
a lot of it's you know, getting people. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing is trying to get people delivered from this, understanding that the enemy is the true enemy, not the people. God, you know, they, Satan's using people, God's using people. But if we can get people to see and we can speak the truth, and if they'll receive and they'll forgive people who hurt them, and then they will end up repenting for their pride and humbling themselves, they'll get delivered. We did a deliverance session last night. It was different than anyone I've ever done. They're always different. And I believe it was more anointed than the ones in the past. And we saw a lot of people get set freed from that. So you can watch it. You can go out to Facebook. You can go out to YouTube and um, share it. Get people to watch it to get delivered. You know, why would anybody be against deliverance? Because all it is is forgiving people who have hurt us. It is repenting for our own pride and our own sin. And... Um, getting delivered so that we can have peace and enjoy our lives and love on people and be Christ-like. So the other verse is Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. How many people have pride? A whole bunch of people. How many people that are in politics have pride? A whole bunch of people, both Republicans and uh, Democrats. But um, it says, yes, seven are an abomination to him. So a proud look, pride, and then a lying tongue. Again, people are lying. The agenda that they have is evil, and they are lying to us. Hands that shed innocent blood. There have been innocent people that have died because of this, lots of them. Yes, the virus is real, absolutely, positively, and it was created by man to hurt people, to kill people, and, um, and it's sad. You know, I, I have compassion for those that have lost their lives. I have righteous anger for that to happen. Um, and now, forcing people to wear a mask and having people die from asphyxiation and having no uh, oxygen coming in, that's equally as wrong and bad. You know, God didn't create us to wear masks. The enemy did. You know, when you go running and working out, you're not supposed to wear a mask. You're supposed to breathe it in. When I was in Colorado, I saw people running down the streets with wearing masks. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, well, why are you doing that? That's dangerous. You could actually die from that. You breathe in enough carbon dioxide, you could pass out. Um, you know, going hikes, hikes in the mountains. And then I'd see people riding bikes. You know, they were very much mountain people out in Colorado because they lived there. And I love going to the mountains. You can get closer to the Lord. But then the crazy stuff happens where the enemy tries to come in and cause you to have fear and worry. And before you know it, you're wearing masks and you're riding a bike. I'm like, what is it in the world? You know, you see people riding in cars with them. And I'm like, you need to read the article here I found about New Jersey and the guy that passed out. Because you don't want that to happen. That's dangerous. So a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed, it, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans. There's a whole bunch of hearts that have done this wickedness. And it's a plan. And now the truth is coming out. If we are willing to have the scales be removed from our eyes where we could actually discern what the truth is. Feet that are swift and running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. We're seeing a whole bunch of that going on. And one who sows discord among brethren. All of this is characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel and Leviathan. And the Lord is exposing all this. Exposing, exposing the truth. And of course the enemy wants to silence the truth. Wants to shut our mouths. Wants to put masks over us and say, just be obedient. Shut your mouth. Do what we say. We know what's best for you. Wink, wink when they're trying to take over the one world government. So the first step for all of us is to get right with Jesus, to become part of the remnant. Again, too many of us have gone to church our whole lives, but we're not really delivered. We've never gone through that. The church didn't want to talk about that. The church didn't want to go through that with anyone. They didn't want to tell us we could actually be tormented by demonic thoughts. Even though the Bible talks about it, saying take every thought captive. Why? Because if you don't take the thought captive from the enemy, it will take you captive and you will not be at peace and you will struggle, you will have sexual perversity, all kinds of bad things. So, to, to truly get saved and not just play church like most of us have done with the same religious spirits as the Pharisees and scribes of Jesus' day. To forgive people who have hurt us in the past and, pre and present and give them to the Lord to deal with so that the Lord can forgive us and we can take away the legal rights of the enemy to torment us in our thoughts. So again, if you've been hurt from people, we all have, if you've not completely forgiven them in your heart, that gives legal right to the enemy to keep tormenting your thoughts with anger and bitterness. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they did these bad things. 
You know, we all know of people who gripe about someone like their ex-wife, ex-husband, their father, their mother, and they're like now 70 years of age. And you're like, will you please just um, shut up? <laughs> will you stop? You talk too much. You never shut up. Remember that song? <laughs> And it's because they've got anger and bitterness. They've not gotten freed yet from that. They don't forgive them. They'll say, oh yeah, I forgave him in my heart. Oh yeah, I forgave him. But then they go on and on and talk about, oh my gosh, he did all these horrible, evil things. And they have tears, they have anger, bitterness. It's all enemy crap. All right. And that's what gives them legal rights to torment, our thoughts. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's the legal contract that God set up. And that's what's hard. That's why Jesus was sent here. Because he went through some of the most hell anyone's ever gone through. And yet he was still able to forgive them as he was dying. He was our example, our model. And if we can't forgive people who have hurt us, enemies got legal right to torment us, and we'll have sickness, disease, stuff in our bodies, because the spirits of infirmity always get to come and attack us when we got anger and bitterness. We could be completely innocent. We didn't do anything wrong whatsoever. And we were hurt horribly. You know, I've been, <laughs> had people done really bad things to me <laughs> and lied, evil things, horrible, but I love them. Doesn't mean I'm gonna hang out with them. Doesn't mean I'm gonna stay married to them. If they're gonna lie, if they're going to go off and five or six hours and verbally abuse me or physically, or sexually, you know, I'm not going to tolerate that stuff. I've got a ministry to do that the Lord wants. If they want to get in line and repent to God and do what's right, well, that's what God wants for them because they're not on their way to heaven. And it's because they were hurt in their past. Again, the past has an effect on our present and our future. If we don't recognize and to see that, then we're blinded. And there's a lot of people in the church that are completely blind spiritually. They cannot discern what's really going on. All right, when we forgive others for hurting us, soul wounds, we can then command the demons that were allowed to torment our thoughts to be gone to the pit in Jesus' name so that we can have peace in our minds and thoughts and discern when the enemy is speaking to our thoughts. The National Science Foundation did a study in 2005, found that the average person could have up to 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day, of which 80% were negative, 95% were repetitive from the day before. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast, but the anointing is really comes in fast and so I end up speaking fast. Normally in regular life I talk slower <laughs> and I have I laugh a lot and have a lot of fun so um, but the anointing is increasing I guess so all right then we need to humble ourselves from the pride that we walk in due to the wounds from our past. Pride blinds us from our sin so that we cannot repent or get delivered from the demons tormenting our thoughts. God hates pride and it got Lucifer kicked out of heaven, and it will keep us from getting into heaven if we don't humble ourselves. A lot of people that are in a lot of evil sin, that are in leadership in church, and the Lord's shutting down their churches, taking away their ministries, and exposing the truth in their life. And it's for their own good. If they don't do that, they won't go to heaven. And so the Lord is actually taking those who are humble some of them haven't done any ministry and he's promoting them bringing them into a ministry because they have his humble heart and we're gonna see a lot more of that you know I know personally of pastors that were very prideful that the Lord shut the church down he actually used me in a process of one of confronting them speaking the truth in love and they rejected it they mocked me they laughed and then within a year the church was shut down I had a dream about it before I even met with them and I'm like whoa woe to you scribes and Pharisees if you don't change if you don't get right with the Lord you're not gonna have a church and they don't not anymore and God said he's gonna do that to other churches and he is so pride means I don't need God I got it James 4 6 but he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble James 4 10 humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Proverbs 19, 9, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. And I know that firsthand, I've seen it. I've seen people that have lied about me personally, and I see now their lives are a mess and getting worse 
because they have not humbled themselves from the pride. They have not asked for forgiveness and made it right with the Lord. They have not repented. You know, and there's others of you that have had the same thing have happened, where you know you've been taken advantage of, you've been hurt deeply. And some of you, and some of us, and some of me, <laughs> have done it ourselves in the past. That's the truth. The Lord is in the process of having us consecrate ourselves back to Him, to becoming the pure and spotless bride. So, we need to do that. Praise the Lord. So we need to repent for our sin, and truly, well then, after we forgive people and and identify our pride, then we need to repent for our sin and truly mean it with our whole heart. If we don't mean it, then the demons will continue to speak to us and we will never have peace and be the pure and spotless bride, the remnant that Jesus is coming back for. So Ephesians 5, 22-27 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And I'll, I'll say this caveat to that, is if your husband's a Jezebel, who has been horrible and abusive to you, then... If you submit to everything that the Jezebel husband would require you to do, it doesn't matter. You'll never have peace. He needs to humble himself and get right with the Lord. That's why you need to read the whole thing, all of Ephesians 5, 20 through 27. It takes both the husband and wife. You know, yes, there are women that have Jezebel that will not submit to a godly husband. They want to rebel. They, they were hurt by their own dad oftentimes, or they were sexually touched, and that causes them to rebel against a godly husband or a husband that's kind and then of course we have husbands that are mean and women that are more gentle so it says wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is head of the wife as also Christ is head of the church and he Christ is the Savior of the body therefore just as the church is subject to Christ so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself, Christ, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So both the husbands and wives need to go through deliverance. That's what's so important. Which is forgiveness to those who have hurt us. Coming out of the anger and bitterness for them. Repentance for our own pride and owning our own sin and repenting for that and um, letting Jesus heal us and then commanding the demons to go that have tormented us for a long time. I talk to people all the time the last couple days where people are getting tormented by thoughts from the enemy. Oh my gosh, I can't turn it off, Nelson, can't turn it off. I'm hearing all these thoughts from the enemy. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm like, well, I go, first of all, you got to go through and make sure that you have forgiven everyone that have hurt you, repent for your pride, repent for your sin, and then take the thoughts captive. As soon as you hear a negative thought come to you, shut it down. Mid-sentence. Don't give him more than three words. That was kind of my goal when I first started learning this back in 2009. It's like, okay, if the enemy's coming in, why would I listen to a whole sentence that's going to get me into fear or anger or bad stuff? I will shut it down as soon as I discern it, and then I'll think and re retrain my thoughts on something that is true and noble and just and lovely and good report. And then it made a huge difference in my life. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm at peace. Thank you, Jesus, for that peace. So without getting ourselves ready for Christ's return and becoming pure and spotless through getting our soul wounds healed and deliverance from the demons tormenting and tempting us, we will operate out of our flesh and not have good fruit of the Spirit as the Lord desires. He looks at our heart and minds and sees who we are in private. Unfortunately, most of the pastors in the world did not teach us the most important things. Forgiveness, humility, and repentance and deliverance from sin, and then walking in our full authority in Christ. Most pastors don't even touch those subjects, and they're the most important. Unfortunately, most who have attended church still have fruit of the flesh and do not hear from the Lord. The Bible says that sadly, many will hear the Lord say to them, depart from me, many. I would say most <laughs> that are in the church are gonna hear that. It's the remnant those that are truly the bride of Christ that are going to say, welcome, come in, good and faithful servant. So Matthew 7, 21, 23 says, not everyone, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. 
depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, which is sin. That's why we need to be bold and stand up for Christ and not tolerate sin, not compromise sin in our lives. So there's a whole bunch of people out there in the church that have been doing ministry, casting out demons, prophesying, doing many wonders, and they're not going to heaven. They're going to hell. Why? Because they need to become the pure and spotless bride. They need to consecrate themselves to the Lord. They need to pursue purity and righteousness and holiness and not fake. So, if you want to breathe oxygen instead of wearing the mask, if you want to breathe life, then you can do so by citing the Civil Rights Act 1964 and being discriminated against according to religious beliefs as the managers of the stores are fully aware they could be sued and should allow you to enter. If you do choose, so if you do choose to wear a mask, then it would be wise to put it under your nose. You know, I've had to wear it to get my hair cut. I had to wear it on a plane, but I put it under my nose. So I could breathe in air, oxygen, and not have carbon dioxide. Understand the Lord will protect us from any sickness and disease as we align our lives with him and have our faith in him. Remember when John G. Lake put the bubonic plague on his hand and under a microscope it died before the eyes of doctors because John said the spirit of the Lord lived in him and protected him. When we have the spirit of the Lord living within us, there is nothing to fear. Again, I learned about this since 2009. I don't fear anything anymore. It was a process. You can't just go from having no faith that most people have in the church today to having the faith similar to whatever, Moses, Abraham, overnight. It takes time. And the church should have been teaching this years ago, but they didn't. And now here we are. So Exodus 15, 26 says, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Praise the Lord. Alrighty, so again, this Saturday, I will be in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yay! At the Minneapolis Marriott West, August 1st, Saturday night at 7 p.m. We're starting with some worship, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. We're having a whole bunch of people come from different states, and they're hungry. They want to be around healthy, godly people who are looking for breakthroughs. It's a real event, a real conference for breakthrough, major breakthrough. It's not just coming there, singing some songs, hearing a good message, feeling the presence of the Lord, and then never changing. It's truly getting people, I mean, the last time we went there, people are commenting, I feel lighter, I feel lighter. Oh my gosh, I don't have the pain anymore in my back. It's gone. Oh my gosh. you know I. I, I, I have hope now, I have joy, I feel like there's childlike innocence that's been restored to me. I've been rejuvenated, you know, and they continue to have that great result. So, August 8th, Marriott West Des Moines, Iowa, and August 15th, will be in Marriott. All right, I wonder if it's getting ready to rain. Winds are kicking up, so. Alrighty, so we thank Heavenly Father, Lord. We just bless all those that have watched in Jesus' name. We declare, Heavenly Father, for truth, that we all receive the truth, that we can see through the deception of the enemy in Jesus' name. We have compassion and love for people, truly like Christ would. We thank you, Father God, that you want us to be freed in every way from fear, from anxiety, from anger, from uh, sickness, disease. So we pray, Heavenly Father, right now that you'll give new revelation that the scales from the enemy are removed from everyone's eyes so they can see and that you will continue to give us dreams and visions lord of truth uh, and you will protect us lord in jesus name amen and amen Alrighty, righty let you guys go see ya love ya bye